All right, here we are at our 2006 Regal 3360 Windows Express cabin cruiser for sale here on the beautiful fresh waters of Norris Lake, Tennessee. And as always, we will invite you to our website for the full list of features and specifications on this one. That's at www.yournewboat.com to make things a little bit easier for you down in the description of this video. We will have a link though to direct, take you directly to the photo slideshow page of this listing. You'll be able to see the current asking price as well as all of our contact information. Uh, there'll be once you make it to that photo slideshow page on the left hand side of that page, there's also going to be a link for a printable PDF spec sheet, and that's going to have the full list of features and specifications. Sometimes we can we can only fit so much uh, next to that slideshow page, but that that's going to give you the full full list of everything with this one. And again, that's at www.yournewboat.com. When you do make it over there, you'll be you'll see our contact information. You'll see our phone number. You can call or text that number. And then there'll also be a link to e send us an email on this listing. If you got additional questions, want to set up your own uh, private view into this one or anything of that sort. So again, this is a 2006 Regal 3360 Windows Express Cabin Cruiser for sale. And we're starting this one with the engine hatch open. I'm going to go ahead and do a walk around on this other side and then we'll we'll dive right in with the engine hatch and then we'll go through the full the full walk through and uh, go down in the cabin and everything. Slip is transferable with this one. This is on the um, this would be kind of the northeast corner of Norris Lake Tennessee. Very convenient to I-75 exit 134. We're very close to town. And I'm showing you this area right over here because this uh, patio area can also be purchased in addition with the boat. And they basically have added um, a little floating dock integrated inside this slip. And then you see a front mount boat lift that's attached right there. And that is for a 2018 Scarab 165 ho jet boat that's 250 horsepower it's got a tower on it it's a four-stroke engine bimini top mooring cover kicker stereo it's got cruise control it's five person capacity basically it's a 15 feet nine inch um, loa seven uh, foot one inch beam 1600 pounds dry weight comes with a trailer it's been used only in freshwater and that can be purchased in addition with uh, with the Regal, so probably after we uh, walk through the Regal, we'll come back and revisit this this little patio. You've got all this furniture, some storage boxes, little uh, electric refrigerator, little fire pit. Uh, right here is all all going to be able to be purchased with this one. Now the bunks for this uh, lift are not on there um, at the moment. Those are um, actually getting uh, getting changed out uh, for some different bunks for this next uh, upcoming season. So basically, you can you can have both of these slips if you if you uh, so desire. So we've got a nice large extended swim pl swim platform on this one with an integrated swim boarding ladder. You've got tie up cleats on on either corner of the platform as well. Uh, your this is powered by two 30 amp shore power cables. Those are going to run in through this box right here. That that's going to be your pressure pressure water hookup or your dockside water hookup uh, to plumb the boat. You got a waste pump out right there as well. A little bit of storage right here, um, which is kind of convenient because every once in a while you've got something kind of long, like a paddle, or if you're, um, you know, take a kayak or paddleboard with you, paddles uh, are one of those more larger items to uh, attempt to, to store away. And this is powered by, this is 5.7 GXI uh, Volvo Penta, uh, inboard outboard. We've got the dual prop out drives on these. And we've got about 460 hours on these. When we get to the helm station, I'll, and I'll show those uh, hour meters. Uh, but the GXI, so the I in the GX stands for fuel injection. So these are fuel injected, uh, basically big block V8s. Again, uh, under 500 hours on these in the in the mid 400s. And I'm going to get a little bit closer into our engine compartment here. This also has powered um, engine hatch. And this is a 11 gallon water heater. And this is a 5KW Kohler generator in a sound box, which is gonna make it a little bit quieter for you. And it currently has about 314 hours on it. 
And just behind that, if I get the camera low enough, um, that fire extinguisher, that is for a fire boy, basically an automatic uh, fire suppression system. You'll hear that referred to as a halon system. And then in between your engines, we've got an extreme uh, marine engine compartment heater. And here's your port engine. And then just, just a little bit more over to the port side. That is a uh, 28 gallon waste holding tank. And it does have the vacuum pump, and that's because this is outfitted with a vacuum flush head, which is always a bonus. That is the best you're going to get on, on a uh, cruiser this size. Pro Mariner, three bank uh, battery charger, mount on the wall there. We've got a battery um, isolator. And then we've got three batteries here, and a fourth that's uh, connected in a series, a little bit more over to the port side. So basically four batteries back here, and all of these are at least from 2020. Um, or yeah, I think they're actually, I think they were all replaced in uh, 2020. Um, your pressure water pump is also mounted on the wall just to the left of that onboard battery charger. Um, and that is so you can, uh, for, your, for your fresh water tank, whenever you're not hooked to dock water, And this one also in uh, 2021, just this last season, this boat was hauled out, um, had a full uh, outdrive service, replaced the U-joints, the gimbal bearings, and your bellows, and put back in the water. So this one had just had a big chunk of some of the uh, bigger ticket maintenance items all done. I'm gonna go ahead and start lowering that powered engine hatch and it's all going to go right back into place and then we'll resume we'll go through the cabin now before it goes all the way I just want to walk over here and make sure that that uh, eyes and glass cover wasn't going to get snagged everything looks good so we'll go ahead and go down the last few inches there we are now we're here so then, of course, you can uh, reconnect these snaps right here. Always make sure anytime you're raising your engine hatch, especially the powered hatches, verify that your um, that your enclosure, assuming it's on, is out of the way. I'm not going to cause any harm. That little zip right there. And so we, uh, before we climb on inside, let me show you. We got a nice storage hatch right back here. Um, this is where you can um, store a lot of your uh, wet toys, your dock rope, and, and things like that. And that will latch like so. And I told you all that about the cover. And should have raised that hatch before we secure those snaps. Um, and then one more thing before we enter into our cockpit area we do have a little transom handheld shower right here and that's going to have hot and cold see a little bit of pink there that is from um, your antifreeze from winterization that's always a good sign that's what you want to see and then we've got a little transom door right here well there we go and that'll kind of lock into place right there so Go ahead and leave that open so I can get through here a little bit more easily. And I'll also pull that zip down just a little way. We'll go all the way with that. All right, so now we're in our cockpit. We've got a, a nice integrated, uh, basically an easy removable rear bench seat, although it's more of a fold up than a removable. But basically if, if you're um, hanging out in the cockpit or you want to do some fishing, you know, if you got the enclosure off, this bench seat easily stows away. I'll show you here in just a moment after I kind of let you see the full back half of this cockpit. All right, now bear with me here. Maybe I can do this one-handed. Yeah, a little bit easier actually storing away. You need kind of need two hands to to, uh, to fold it out. Simple as that. Whenever you fold these uh, these legs up, um, that latch is gonna basically lock that into place. So you see right there, 
and it goes into place and it's secured. Simple as that. We do have a um, remote stereo switch right here that is functional. It's going to do volume. Uh, you're going to be able to change your sources as well as um, scan for channels or skip to the next song I'll right back here. And this is a little uh, integrated storage for a cooler. And then we've got, I think about uh, nine cup holders back here in our cockpit. There's two, four, six of those over here on the port side. And then over here on the starboard side, you got two more for eight and then one by your driver's seat, which you'll see here in a minute, cockpit sink. And then this is a Uline ice maker, which is, very nice feature to have if you've got an ice maker and a cooler you can stay out and extend that stay for quite a while so you can make your own ice while you're out and about so i've got the filler cushion in for this um u-shaped dinette now over our website if you go through the photo slideshows i'll have some photos uh with basically with that filler cushion removed and the table in place so you can use that with or without the table You've got uh, storage underneath these seats. You've got your battery switches right here, accessible. And basically a little storage cubby on the other side of that U-shaped dinette. Also some storage integrated underneath that cockpit sink. And our basically wide driver's seat or your captain's seat is, is going to have a big flip up bolster but it also is on a swivel. So if you do have this cockpit table in place, if you're just anchored or even in the slip and you're entertaining, um, you've got um, basically kind of a, a very adaptable cockpit here. It's gonna let you kind of um, allow everybody to get comfortable. Now this will basically just swing right around. Hey. Snap right back into place. And that will also go forward or back. And then we've got this flip up bolster, which is almost a requirement when you get into these um, larger cruisers because these are going to have a good bit of bow rise whenever you're um, taking off accelerating until you get up on the plane so having that flip up bolster is going to be quite handy so there's that um, cup holder for your driver they'll stay in this cup holder down there do you have a tilt steering wheel with wood grain there's your trim tab controls and of course you've also got your uh, a lot of your um, switches back here for all your different items and then we function tested uh, a lot on this boat your windlass is functional depth finder is functional uh, most of your lighting's work the arch light has a few uh, light bulbs that are out um, your navigation lights all function your bilges your blowers um, and the horn functions as well and check that yep, windshield wiper also functions just fine so tilt steering wheel um, here's your uh, Indicator for that uh, halon fire extinguisher that would be for your carbon monoxide detector and there's your bilge And then there's also a battery parallel that will allow you basically to uh, to combine your batteries if you're um, if you're ever very low um, That's your GPS um, trying to stay in a lock position So this is a Raymarine C80. It's a chart plotter and uh, radar or, or sonar this does have the Raymarine radar and this currently has a Rivers, uh, I believe it's a Southern Rivers uh, map card which basically would, would be right in here. So if you change that out for a um, Inland Lakes and Rivers uh, then you'll have uh, Norris Lake on that card. Sometimes you can get those fairly inexpensively off eBay, but if you know if somebody did want the full Norris Lake map on here, or you know if you're going to another lake with it, just check uh, check for a card uh, for that Ray Moraine. But you've also got all your GPS positioning on here. You're going to be able to see um, GPS speeds as you're underway, and you know as well as the, and even though the um, as you can see we've got Tennessee River down here and, and just kind of a blank area up here you know you've got that blank area you know you can still uh, even lay out some bread bread crumb bread crumbs if you wanted to so you can follow yourself around now we've got a standard horizon VHF radio and that also functions quite nicely that's a newer unit best I can tell and then we've got a guest remote spotlight which also function test it just fine for us and then there's your uh, your depth finder here at the dash and then you've got your one speedometer and then you've got your 
uh, tachometers right here with the integrated hour meters. And those are nice and close together for quick reference. And that's showing you our current engine hours. So we've got 540.5 hours showing on the port engine. We're going to call that 541. And we've got 561.7 on the starboard engine. We will round that up to 562. Um, there's your trim gauges uh, for both your port and starboard side. Basically, they're going to put all these in pairs. So you got port and starboard trim gauges, port and starboard battery volts, port and starboard uh, engine oil pressure, port and starboard uh, engine water tail. And then you've got your two fuel ga uh, gauges right over here. That again, that's port and starboard. Compass uh, just over, uh, just forward above uh, your uh, helm area. And we've also got a 12 volt power outlet here at your driver's seat as well, just below that VHF radio. Additionally, you got some storage underneath your driver's helm seat. And we've got two um, Kenwood stereo speakers here, uh, basically integrated on your radar arch. And again, we do have a large bimini top on this. This is really nice for those of you that prefer the shade or just staying out of that direct sunlight. Um, now, most people are going to want to kind of take this Isinglass, your, your plastic um, Isinglass enclosures down during the summer months. Uh, but then, and you can, you don't have to have that, um, that bimini top up either. You can, you can kind of uh, remove that or fold that back and only only have it when you need it as well if you're uh, if you uh, prefer the all that direct sunlight so this is a uh, basically a uh, chart uh, display right here is where you're gonna be able to keep your maps and basically that plastic just lifts right up well it's not quite easy to do with gloves on uh, but you can keep basically your maps underneath there and um, basically keeps those from blowing away. And then you've also got a little storage compartment under here, and that's a great place. Actually, that's uh, meant to store that dinette table whenever you're not using it, but it's also kind of a deep storage um, that will uh, be able to accommodate a lot of other items as well. Now, our cabin door. So we're about ready to step down into the cabin. There's another feature integrated with it, which is a screen door. And this is very nice if you uh, like being out uh, anchored in a cove. Um, just having that screen door will allow you to get a lot more of a breeze down in your cabin and not have to rely on the heat and air. But you do have a 12,000 BTU marine heat and air unit, uh, basically a reverse cycle. Essentially, it's a geothermal unit. And we got a beautiful uh, cabin floor down here in this regal and then I've got the dinette table in place and it is folded out just kind of showing it off and it will collapse well it'll fold up essentially so if you don't need that large of a table you can fold up one side or both and then of course that entire table will also uh, remove and store away so this uh, this large kind of uh, wide dinette bench is also convertible into a bed and we will have photos of it made into a bed again at the website in the photo slideshow you'll be able to see that uh, with with and without the table in place and with and without it made into a bed so your power panels are right here as you step down so there's your 110 panel and your uh, remote start for your generator it's integrated into this you've got your transfer switches going from shore power one shore power two and then, and then over to generator and then of course you got your uh, your big uh, breakers for air conditioning your stove top your ice maker your outlets your microwave battery charger more outlets and your water heater and then just up above that you've got your 12 volt panel and that's where as you can see we've got basically all three sections your forward uh, mid and aft Lights all turned on. Um, now the macerator is not being used here on Norris, but you got the option for that if you're ever in an area that allows you to discharge your wastewater. And then of course your fresh water pump, uh, your refrigerator, your vacuum flush for your head, as well as uh, your 12 volt uh, outlets, TV antenna, vent for the head, stereo, CO detector, and your holding tank level monitoring gauge, which is gonna uh, basically show your fresh water 
and your holding tank. Now, uh, the waste tank, I will tell you, um, these are not ever as accurate because that basically tries to get its reading from the side of the tank. And with your waste tank, uh, solids tend to kind of collect on the edges of the tank. Um, usually it'll let you know when you're full, full. Um, and, and that will improve if you kind of flush that tank out a few times. You'll start to get a little bit more accurate reading on there, but it doesn't last long. Fresh water tank is always going to be accurate, which is empty right now for the winterization state. Just below that, we've got your head unit for your Kenwood. This is a AM FM um, CD stereo. And then just below that is an integrated DVD player, which is currently, I should point out, is not hooked up. And that is because they've upgraded from what would have come uh, standard with this boat, about a 19 inch uh, television. They've upgraded that to a 43 inch Samsung LED television. And um, now, uh, with that said, you should be able to get some adapters to make that work. Here, here's basically your your inputs uh, from that DVD player. So if you get a, um, oh, what are those, auxiliary inputs uh, to HDMI, then you'll be able to convert that and, and have that integrated DVD player work for you. I'll slide that TV up just a little bit. And we do have, uh, so two stereo speakers down here. You've got one here and one here. So basically four, four speakers for that stereo, two in the cockpit, two down here in your cabin. Beautiful uh, flooring on this one I've already been bragging about. We've also got an, a nice little storage compartment right here, which the sellers have utilized quite nicely. And then here is your forward V-berth. And they do call this the Windows Express for a reason. You got a lot of lighting down in here. Um, so you've got basically two more curtains right here in your in the berth. This is a little bit more easily done with two hands and one. Now, you're not seeing all that lighting coming in because I've got our cushions out in the bow, which we'll see that um, here in a few because I will take you up to the bow area whenever we're down here in the cabin. Um, we've got uh, basically your vents for your heating and air small little closet right here there is a co detector there and then again our nice v berth and that would be your light switch some more 12 volt lighting over there and then here we've got a hanging closet you've got uh, cedar lining in these set bar at the top for your hanging closet and you'll notice the light comes on when you turn that uh, or when you open that, it's basically an integrated lighting. Now, here, this is basically an extension for some counter space, or if you want a little nightstand um, next to your bed, that's simply what this um, is right here, and that will slide right away, and it actually has a little bit of a catch, uh, so that does not come out easily. You kind of got to pull on that, and that is by design, so that's not flying open and closed. Uh, same thing with all your drawers, so you got three... Um, integrated little uh, drawers right here and these you've got to uh, you've got to push the little knob before that's going to open and you've got this little um, little seat integrated right there whenever you don't need the extra cabinet space and then here at our galley as you can see we've got a nice little stainless sink we've got an electric dual burner range and integrated microwave and then lots of storage as well get some there right here and here now when you're not using your range top you've got a little cover for it that's going to kind of double your counter space and of course your microwave will close as well a little bit of a shelf storage shelf right there as well and then also some um, storage integrated underneath your seat as well now this is your AC DC refrigerator and the AC and DC stands for your basically your 12 volt and your regular shore or generator power. Uh, DC being the 12 volt side. Nice little isotherm refrigerator, small little freezer space as well. And then you got an outlet GFCI protected outlet right here next to your galley.
going to let you see our headliner up there. Now, there's a track right here. This would be for a basically a privacy curtain um, that can hang right there. And that was that was just simply removed, which is which is just personal preference. And then just below this 43 inch Samsung LED television, we do have our mid cabin. And this is basically a full size bed. Now, uh, this personal preference here, but the sellers have basically added um, essentially a, a regular full size uh, memory foam mattress on top of kind of the. Uh, what would have been here, which is your cushions. Now this uh, cushion directly under uh, this section would actually um, stow away. It actually is on a little track and your other cushion here is uh, basically has a, uh, a gas shock that's going to kind of uh, be able to lift easily and hold in position where you can move that cushion in and out. Basically what that does is that allows you to kind of uh, make a little seating area um and again here the sellers have just elected they use this primarily as as a bed and they've upgraded that mattress a little bit so uh when you've done when you do that all you really do is give up a little bit of that um seating area if needed uh but i would say it's pretty common um that uh most most boat owners are, like to give themselves more of a um, more of a, a a true bed sometimes they'll do it in the v-berth sometimes they'll do it back here in the mid cabin but you've got a nice roomy mid cabin back here another um carbon monoxide detector in the corner there and a hanging closet back there in that corner as well and you do have uh, regular carpeting uh, in that little seating area as well so again put it on preference that could be used utilized in either manner either like it is now as as just more of a regular bed or or the option to uh to basically just remove that mattress and um, use it um, more as how it was originally uh, built. Now, before we leave our cabin area, we've got one more room to visit, and that would be our head compartment, which happens to be quite, quite roomy. So again, this is a vacuum flush head, and essentially this has a separate shower stall or shower head. So you can see that's your, um, there's your toilet tissue that is covered. You've got uh, heat and air in here as well. There's your, your port light. And then you've got another light right there. It's gonna bring in some more natural lighting. And here's your sink. You've got a lot of storage underneath the sink. I'll show you what, what I mean. Right there. And you've got storage integrated above your sink as well. Right here basically with your own little uh, integrated medicine cabinet. Now, these little bags here, that was just someone being a little bit more thorough with their winterization, which is always nice. Um, they basically um, just put those bags on to basically essentially just catch the antifreeze um, so that they're not kind of uh, kind of scumming up their, their sinks with that antifreeze. So again, just personal preference there. So here's your um, your shower head uh, controls. Now a lot of times you've got to pull out that shower that you use to wash your hands in here for your shower. This one here, you've got your own shower head up here. And again, this um, Ziploc bag, this is just simply, see, you see that pink antifreeze? They've just done that so that they don't have antifreeze all over. All over this nice kind of uh, little, um, um, I guess that's a, a, a tile mimicked floor. And that is basically fiberglass. It just kind of has a tile look to it. Um, but with a nice little countertop in here. So quite uh, quite roomy little head compartment there. That's something you don't typically find on this size um, cabin cruiser. So that's always a nice, always a nice bonus. All right, so that's gonna kind of do it here for the uh, for the cabin area. Let's head back to the cockpit. There is storage underneath uh, this hatch right here. Nothing fancy in there. That's just a, this small little storage compartment. Also houses a uh, fire extinguisher. So now we've made it back to the uh, to the cabin side. Pull our cabin door closed. Now we've got three steps right here integrated um, that you could use to get up to the bow area. Now since the enclosure is all in place, I'm going to take the long way around, and we will basically we'll revisit the exterior. We'll get kind of get up close and personal uh, with the condition of this one where this is where we kind of start to look for the wear and tear and then I'll also walk back over to that patio 
and uh, give you a look at that one more time. Now, you can go up uh, basically either side on this. You've, you've got some nice kind of integrated steps, and then you've got a nice little grab rail right here uh, coming next to that arch, and then you've got places to walk just below that rubber out there. Now there is a cockpit cover for this. See these snaps that are right below that windshield? That's basically where that cockpit cover would uh, be installed if you did not have the Isinglass enclosure on. And then up here on the bow, you can see where we've got these uh, bow cushions in place. You've got two fender holders up here, as well as your windless anchor, remote spotlight. And of course you can operate your windless from the comfort of your captain seat or right here using these switches right here. And I believe I've got the power turned off. Well, maybe the power's not turned off for that. Um, that is not gonna go anywhere because it is on that safety chain there. And then we'll pull that in. So these hatches here, um, you've also got some integrated lights, which is, I find super convenient because often you're uh, dropping your anchor after dark. Um, I guess, but it depends on your boater. But uh, plenty of chain and rope down there. And this side, you've got, not only do you have the same thing, same access to that compartment, again, light it. Um, that's the tool for your for your uh, Lumar windlass, uh, if it should be needed. And then you've also got a little uh, washdown spigot up here, that little water hose, which is can be very convenient if you're uh, doing any cleaning, and especially when you're hooked to your dock water you can use that hose up here and and wash off your your anchor if you pull it up and it happens to still have some some mud on it from the lake bottom you can give it a little wash before you move about your way so uh these cushions are completely removable those are uh this this larger one here is on a track with some snaps and then that other one there has does have a few snaps on it so head back around on the port side this time And can you, can, you can use that grab bar. Before I step down over here, I'll stop for a moment, show you our Sea Watch uh, antenna. That's just for a, that's basically just a regular analog antenna. There's your your horn. That is your Ray Marine uh, radar. Got your anchor light, and then that would be looks like your Ray Marine uh, GPS antenna, uh, just over there on that starboard corner, of your radar arch. And then there in the middle, this is uh, this originally had, or not originally had, this at one time had an aftermarket boat alarm installed. Um, that has been decommissioned um, and just has, just has not been um, necessary here in its current place. This is at a rather secure marina here on Norris. And again, this boat can stay right here where it is. And. So now we do have some wear on the exterior of this one. A few little dings and scratches here and there. Let's start here, about the center of your swim platform. We've got a good little mark right here. A few little stress cracks on this platform and some other dings from just getting into your dock. And then moving on. Got a few little marks here, and th these are going to kind of show themselves pretty easily because of the, the navy coloring on this one. Those are not going anywhere. Those are all kind of down into the gel coat, um, and then some of those into the fiberglass. Can get those repaired. Uh, my advice to people is usually, um, if you have not been in this size cruiser before, or if it's a first-time boat, uh, don't run out and get these repaired right away. Um, you need to give yourself a learning curve in case you just happen as you know while you're getting the hang of it you put a few more on there uh, nothing is worse than getting those looking like new again and then putting your first mark on yourself so you know, my advice wait you know even even if you're a knowledgeable boater um, if this is kind of a, a larger size for you you know, give it give it a little time before you get those repaired okay and then after after a year if you feel feel good about your handling of it coming in and out of the slip okay then you can go get those repaired if you want now this has not had a recent buff and wax on it some of this smaller stuff right here should disappear and then we've got a few little watermarks right there and all that's going to disappear with a good buff and wax um some of these 
some of these more that, that are a little bit more white, some of those old marks right in there might not disappear and a few more right, right about there. Uh, but the lighter ones um, typically will, typically can get blended in with a real good buff and wax. And we do have some water spots up here on just this forward section. We kind of knocked off uh, some dust on this one. And where we could reach, we were able to kind of um, wipe those watermarks away. But uh, that last about third of the boat, or last about eight, ten feet going up toward the bow, was just out of reach for us to get those uh, watermarks wiped off. Does have a nice finish on it, not a whole lot of oxidation. Really not a whole lot of oxidation at all. This one appears to have been waxed regularly. Now, starting at the center of the platform, going uh, towards your port side, there's a little mark there, a few more right in here, and a few little scratch cracks around this corner of the platform. And then I'm gonna move around the dock some, a few more marks down into that fiberglass and gel coat of that swim platform. And then, this looks like this has had a repair right here in this corner right here. A um, little bit of a different uh, finish on that gel coat. Um, looks like there was probably a, a, a pretty good mark right there that somebody went and had repaired. And then a few more of those little dot marks down on this port side. Again, because of that, that navy coloring, these kind of show up pretty easily. But again, don't run out and get these repaired right away. Wait till you've got another boat and you've at least had uh, part of a season with it. And then if they're really bothering you, you want to look as new as possible, then go get them repaired. And then we got one more right up here just above the rub rail over here on this port side. And that's a pretty good mark right there. Now that one there, um, you want to put probably some, um, maybe some 4200 in there just to kind of waterproof that so, uh, so no rainwater is going to get in that area but it is up you know well above the water line above that rub rail um, so if that's sealed up properly um, that will keep that from becoming any kind of an issue uh, but you know again if you want to address some of those other ones you can do that one at the same time i also want to point up here by your windless anchor we've got a nice um, basically stainless steel bow plate on there and then to give that boat some protection Not if you ever put it on a trailer or sometimes even pulling into other, other docks. Nice real lettering on this one. And then of course you've got the model name, uh, that 3360 right here next to your stern running light. So that's gonna about do it for the boat. Let me walk you over here to this patio one more time. So we start to wrap up and again, uh, visit the website. We'll have some photos of the, uh, the Scarab. Uh, again, it's a 2018 Scarab 165 HO jet boat that can be purchased as a package for this one and if the purchaser of the regal does not wish to uh, take advantage of the uh of the scarab then that will eventually be listed separately but all this patio furniture and these storage boxes as well as the lift uh, can all go as a package deal if the buyer prefers so again, I thank you very much for joining us. That's gonna wrap things up. Again, this is the 2006 Regal 3360 Windows Express Cabin Cruiser. Uh, please visit the website, www.yournewboat.com. And again, we'll have a link uh, that'll take you directly to the listing for this one. There's a beautiful freshwater, the North Lake right out this direction. We are at, down at uh, Winter Pool right now. Actually, a little bit above winter pole, but that's typical for this time of year. And yeah, that's going to do it for this one today. And I thank you again for joining us. Please uh, click over to the website for any more uh, questions. Set up a view of this one. Uh, measurements on this one this comes in at uh, 34 feet 8 inch LOA, 11 feet 4 inch beams. It's got about a 2 feet 11 inch draft and comes in about 12,120 pounds dry. That is without any fuel water or gear and bridge clearance on this one which is your height basically from the water line to the top of that radar arch about nine feet eight inches 
50 gallon fresh water tank, uh, 11 gallon water heater, 28 gallon waste tank. Uh, fuel capacities I have at the website, I believe they come in about 168 gallons. But again, uh, any questions on this one or the package, anything like that, please um, uh, use that link below the video tour and click it over to our website where you can reach out to us by phone, by text, by email. I do like to remind you, if you call us on the phone, you get a voicemail. If you would like a return phone call, please just make sure to leave a message. We are frequently in areas without cell phone reception, so if you don't leave a message, we'll have no idea that you called. If you do want better, leave me a detailed message. Let me know which boat you're looking at, what questions you have. As soon as we get back in cell phone range, we can have all those answered for you. And um, if you send us an email, have not gotten a response in one business day, please check your spam folder. We're usually very, very quick about returning those and get those back, out, uh, get replies back out usually the same day, but we're often out in the water um, and out of range. So it, it sometimes it's not till the evening we get those, but we do respond to everyone. And you'll see the yournoboat.com logo popping up in the top right hand corner of your screen. That's just a shortcut to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you do that, it's a great way to get notified of new listings as they come to the market um, in our area. So great source for you for somebody if you're wanting to be in something on Norris Lake, just hadn't decided what yet. And that's going to probably uh, catch all the listings that hit the area as they come available. And I thank you again for joining us.